in Gran Turismo 7. Which one is faster, controller or wheel? In this video, we're gonna test exactly that to find out which one is the fastest. Stay tuned for the whole video and we're gonna run through a bunch of tips for controller players and also wheel players. But getting straight into my first point, and that is a global sweeping statement. If you are a gamer and you are familiar with using a controller, either playing first person shooters or any other console game, and you're very used to handling a controller, you have good controller dexterity, then in Gran Turismo 7, it is possible for you to be fast. If you find you are frustrated by using the controller, if you find it very awkward to use, then you might be faster using a wheel both control methods have their positives and both their control methods have their negatives and in this test I'm going to be using the Alsace circuit experience with the Renault RS01 car I was going through uh, collecting all the credits doing the gold circuit experiences and during this driving with my wheel I found that it would be quite an interesting track to test with on a controller the car drives really nicely but it does have a little bit of lift off oversteer and it can be really loose on throttle coming out the corners in second gear. So all of these aspects of the way the car drives, I think are really good to truly analyze whether controller or wheel can be faster. For this test, I'll be using a PS4 Pro using the PlayStation 4 controller. And for the wheel, I'll be using the Logitech G29. All of the settings that I use for all of these tests are in my fastest settings in Gran Turismo 7 video, which you can find linked at the end of this video. Let's get straight into it. Side by side comparison lap. On the left hand side is the controller lap. On the right hand side is the lap using the G29 wheel. And we have got these clips completely aligned. Uh, the ghost is the demonstration ghost 0.4 seconds ahead. And we're gonna go into turn one and we're gonna get on the gas. And as you can see from the controller, it's much more snappy. It's a lot more nimble to be able to uh, catch the car on opposite lock with the wheel you have to put a lot more effort in you have to turn the wheel a large physical amount to catch the slides with the wheel it's easier to carve nice consistent corners with the controller it's a little harder to be more precise and flowing with your lines but you have that snappy steering control with uh, the controller and the wheel i found that getting on the gas being smooth on the throttle was was equal on the brakes, I was okay on the brakes with both controller and wheel, uh, but I found trail braking with the controller to be a little harder as you're using the same thumb and finger on the same hand, on the left hand. It is the steering which plays the biggest difference. And with the controller, you've got such a small, fine amount of movement. Uh, with the controller, there is a level of filtering. So the faster you go, it limits the amount of lock the car will put on, which can be a good thing. Uh, but on some of the slower corners, it can be a bad thing. As you're gonna see now into one of the tighter hairpins on the controller, we're gonna try really hard to get the car turned and it's just running wide. If you really want to properly analyze both these two laps, I'd recommend rewinding back and watching each side of the screen uh, to see the way the car behaves. The controller one is much more alive. It's a lot more random. It's, it's very, very sharp. The wheel is much smoother and carves uh, very smooth corners. You can see we're quite close on both these lap times. In fact, it's gonna be very close running to the line. We're gonna come across the line and we're gonna get gold on both laps and it's 0.1 in it, but it does go to the wheel. But this is far from over. And driving both these laps with different control methods, I actually found that I learned more about each control method by trying the opposite control method. Hopefully that makes no sense at all. Driving with a controller, which is on screen right now, this is the replay of the controller. It is so much easier to flick your thumb and catch a slide on corner exit. You can be on the throttle, uh, flick your thumb, catch the slide and not have to lift at all. It's a huge benefit on corner exit using a controller but the benefit of being so quick and snappy to catch a slide is also a negative in such that you, you find it difficult to control and carve smooth lines. So my recommendation for controller players is to make the most of that snappy catching uh, method, but as much as you can, be smooth on your steering input stick. Make the most of using the controller 
Uh, try and gain times on your corner exits, but make a conscious effort to be smooth on the flowing parts of the track with your steering stick. The negative with the controller is that the filtering that the controller provides actually does limit the steering possibly a little bit too much in the slower corners. Harmonic pointed this out on his channel. He has a great video about the controller use and using the handbrake to overcome this. And you see in this corner right here, we are really suffering and struggling to get the car around that slow corner. Perhaps in this example, I should have over slowed the car, got the car rotated, squared off and got on the gas early. But that is something to bear in mind with the controller. With the wheel replay playing in the background now, while playing with the controller, I, I really started to learn and understand how much more physical you need to be with the wheel to really make the most of it. And with the wheel, it's so easy to carve really smooth, nice corners, but it's also really easy to become lazy and drive with only moving the wheel very slowly with very controlled movements, really. And after playing with the controller and realizing how much faster you can be on corner exits with a little flick of the thumb I then started to put this back into playing with the wheel and really getting quite physical with the steering. Uh, throttle and brake you would just use these completely as normal but my 100% recommendation when using a wheel is to just try and consciously be more active on the wheel, work the wheel more, work the wheel, find the grip, uh, get ready for those snap oversteer moments. Uh, flick it to catch the oversteer and then get back onto the lock you need for the corners. Once you start to get this method into your mind, then you can really unlock some extra pace with the wheel. The wheel already naturally has a very flowing ability to drive through the corners. If you want to try and really make the most of driving with the wheel, be more animated, be more dynamic using the wheel and you will certainly gain some lap times. And this goes back to some of my uh, settings videos. A lot of people were questioning why I use quite a low force feedback. And it's very much specifically for this reason. When you have a low force feedback setting, it allows you to be more animated with the wheel. You can catch stuff quicker. You don't need to overcome the force feedback. You can start to dominate the wheel. You are driving the car. You're not letting the car drive you. So that's it then, I guess. Wheel is faster. We've proven that in that last uh, comparison 82% uh, of the people in this poll think the wheel is faster but is it is it really faster so I went again PlayStation 4 controller demonstration ghost in front as normal and we're going to really attack this one make the most of the controller getting on the gas really early and really working on those corner exits and we've got a great exit from that corner there. That is the demonstration ghost and we are going to catch this ghost all through the lap. Uh, smooth corner here, trying my hardest to keep a smooth line through the corner and then jamming on the brakes down into third gear, making that corner nice rotation there, getting on the gas, catching those slides with that corner exit and leaving the throttle completely pinned and relying on the flick of the thumb to catch the car through these flowing sections. Trying my hardest to keep the car flowing Keep a nice small amount of steering lock and into this braking zone here we're going to flow through here quite nicely get on the gas as early as we can catching those slides as we can and we are gaining on the demonstration ghost we're in with a shot of beating the demonstration ghost right now on the brakes in this downhill section letting the car flow into here the car slides a little bit but because we're on the controller we've got great ability to catch the car whenever it slides through this long sweeping corner the car is almost always sliding but being on the thumbstick controller I know with a slight flick of the thumbstick, I can bring that car snap back under control into this difficult braking zone here. I'm gonna try my best to get the car slowed down and get the car turned. And we are wide, we do have that uh, steering lock problem. The ghost comes back at us um, through this uphill left-hander. We are almost flat on corner exit. Again, flicking the stick to keep the car under control. Uh, two more slow corners to go on the downhill braking zone and we should be on for a good lap here down into second gear miss the apex completely there pretty shocking line to be honest so there's plenty of time left on the table on the corner exit we're going to get it completely wild but catch it with the thumbstick racing's the line and we're going to finish in a 152.2 that is three seconds under the gold time with a controller it's also 0.6 seconds faster than the, my wheel time and 
what, what do we know from that, guys? So I'm going to come back to the point I made at the very start of the video. If you are a gamer, if you are comfortable using a controller, if you have good finger dexterity, then there is no reason why you can't be fast with a controller in Gran Turismo 7. Of all of the racing games there are that exist that I've ever played, both Gran Turismo Sport and Gran Turismo 7 are so good on the controller. In fact, all of the Gran Turismo series have always been fantastic at representing the controller. The Gran Turismo series of games have been always very fantastic at filtering the steering input to be useful. When you're traveling faster, it doesn't let you go to full lock as you would do with a thumbstick. With a steering wheel, it just gives you direct control. If you uh, give it 50% lock on your steering wheel, no matter how fast you're going, the game will apply 50% lock. When driving with a controller, it will limit your steering angle to be something that's representative for the speed you're traveling. Let's also just talk about the elephant in the room that is tire wear with controller. Tire wear with controller is a thing. Just the way you drive the car, it seems to wear the tires a lot more. It certainly did in Gran Turismo Sport and it seems to do the same in Gran Turismo 7. Now that time I've just set with my controller, will I be able to beat that with my wheel? I, I don't actually know. I'm sure I'll get a whole lot closer to that time than I did in the previous laps. And it just comes down to putting in the time. Uh, I don't think there's any significant benefit to either control method. But certainly when it comes to racing or driving with the wheel setup, the level of immersion is a whole new level. It's so much fun to drive, being physical, being animated, wrestling with a car and keeping it under control is so much fun. Hopefully this video has answered some questions for you and also it's given you some tips for how to improve whether you are a controller player or a wheel player. On screen right now is my current fastest time. This is my time with a controller. Let's have some fun. Who can grab their wheel and go and beat that time at the Alsace Circuit Experience? If you have enjoyed this video, then don't forget to hit that like button. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Hit the bell to be notified whenever we upload a new video. On screen right now will be a link to the video, which is the fastest settings in Gran Turismo 7. These are the exact settings for controller sensitivity, force feedback that I used to make this video. Thank you very much for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.